This is a Magix Movie Edit Pro tutorial on how to make time-lapse videos. There are two methods we're going to use. One can be applied to video clips and the other can be applied to still photos. So let's get started. So you could use a GoPro or a camcorder to take your time-lapse photos. I'm just using my Sony Handycam as an example. So I'm going to go into the menu and change the settings. I'm going to pick the shooting mode, going to go into time lapse, and then go to the settings for time lapse. Going to have one second intervals for the photos. We're going to have light tracking on. We're going to take 600 shots once a second. And then we're going to use HD quality 1080p 16 by 9 video. Okay, let's go ahead and start the sequence. I push the photo button and the shooting begins taking a shot automatically every one second. So now we need to set up our Magix Movie Edit Pro project to accept the time-lapse photos that we just took. So let's go into the file menu, go down to settings, and then movie. So we're going to change our movie settings, and we want to make sure that it matches the photos we just took. So remember we set the photos on the camcorder to be 1080p and 16 by 9 so that's what I've got selected right here. And the way I did that was I just to use this drop down. You could also go with 60 frames a second if you wanted to instead of 30 frames if you wanted a smoother time lapse animation. But I think 30 frames is good enough for me. So we select that and then click OK. The rest of these things I'm just going to leave alone. OK, now let's go back into the file menu. And this time we're going to go to Settings, Program. Now this is where the magic happens. We have to make sure that each picture is one frame long. So what we do is we go in here for the standard picture length and change this to frames and then bring this down to one. Now each picture that comes in will be automatically sized to a time of one frame. Then we're going to click OK to that. All right, now we're ready to import our pictures. So here's the pictures that I just took with my Sony camcorder. And I think I'm going to bring in 300 of them. So I'm just going to scroll down, highlight that one, come back up here, hold the shift key down, highlight that one. Now I'm just going to left click, hold, and drag those in. Now remember, I set the picture length to be one frame. So it should automatically adjust those. So it's bringing them in. Okay, and there's all the pictures adjusted to one frame. Let's take a look at it. Let's hit the plus key. And you can see each one of these is one frame long. Okay, I'm going to hit the double arrow just to make it fit. All right, now let's go ahead and play it and see what it looks like. So you can see the clouds are rolling along there. So this time-lapse video that we did with pictures is now done and I could go ahead and export it. But before I get into that, let's show you the other method for just a standard video, how to turn that into a time-lapse. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in. This is one I just recorded as a standard video. It's uh, 16 by 9, 1080p, 30 frames a second video from my camcorder. This isn't a picture, but actual video. Okay, so how do we turn this into a time lapse? Well, the answer is with the speed function, which I have selected up here right now. Now you can go ahead and just drag this speed function up and it'll make it smaller or larger. Let me show you. I'll go to the full extent here. Now this is where my other time lapse is down here and it ends right there. But say I wanted to make this one the same length as that one. What I could do is adjust the speed, see how that's shrinking down? But there's a limit to how far I can go. It won't let me go more than four with the audio still in there. See, if I try to put eight up here or change it, it says uh, the playback speed for the video with the audio can be a minimum of 0.25 and a maximum of four. So I can't go any more than four, and I'd like to get a lot more. So. What I have to do is go ahead, and let me move this down so you can see what we're doing. There we go. So what I want to do is get the audio out of there. And the way I do that is just 
click this separate button right here, ungroup. Do that. There's the audio. Now the audio is removed. You can keep the audio if you want, but I'm just going to delete the audio. Okay, now we've got only video. Now we can go back to speed, and I could change this to say an 8. Now, see how that shrunk down? But I'd like to be even smaller than that. Actually, I want to be the same length as this other video. So what we can do is use this time stretch tool. It does the same thing as speed, but it's just a little bit easier. So I can hold down on the left button on my mouse, and I'll get this little cursor like that before I do it. So the cursor changes to the time stretch icon. And then I can hold down that left button and just move it back in until I get the same length. Now it's the same length. You can see the clouds moving around. Let's go ahead and make this timeline the full amount so we can see what's going on. So it's not quite the same length as the other one. If I wanted it to be, I could just stretch it back out. Makes it a lot easier than trying to figure out what this number should be up here in the speed function. Instead, you can just drag it. And there's stretch curve and preview audio, so just make sure you're on the stretch feature when you do this. And when you're done stretching, you can just go back to the normal cursor like that. So now it's fully stretched. Audio had to be removed, but you can see the clouds are now moving along just like they did when we used still pictures. So which one should you use? That's the question. Should you use still pictures or should you use video? Um, to me, I think if you're going to do a very long time lapse, it's going to take a lot of room to do it as a video. It's going to have a huge file. Like if you wanted to go all day long, that would take a huge file. So you'd be better off just taking single photos like this and doing it that way. But if you're just doing a short clip, like about 10 seconds or something, a minute or something like that, then you might just take a regular video and then use the speed function to make it look like a time lapse. So either way, you just have to decide which one you want to do. Now, is one smoother than the other? Well, from what I can tell, from what I just did, they both look about the same. So there is that one. Now, if I mute that one, and look at the top one. To me, not much difference. I'll just play it here. You can see that. I mean, that's with photos, and some people say photos are jerky, but it doesn't look jerky to me. It looks fine. So maybe just something to do with the length of the photo that they're using, or they didn't take enough photos. I took one every one second, which is plenty. But if you stretch it out to like taking a photo every minute or every five minutes, then it would really look jerky. So it could just be that. So before we export, let's just arrange this so we can see both at the same time. What I'm going to do is highlight this track down here and use size and position to move it over a little bit so I can see both at once. So let's just do that. Now, when we go through it, we can see actually both time lapses playing at one time, which might be kind of cool. You can see the daytime and the evening time. All right, now let's go ahead and export. All right, let's hit this double arrow. That just makes sure the range markers are at the beginning and end of our project. Now we can go up to File. Export movie, and I'm going to use MPEG 4. And let's make sure it's got the right settings. We're still going to use 1080p and 30 frames a second. And let's see, let's go in here and I'm just going to pick my favorite one, which is Dave's 1080p here. That's me, Dave. Okay, so I got that in there. And this is the title. We know where it's going. It's going into movies. Everything looks pretty good. I've got export selected range only. And that's because I'm just going to get what's at these range markers here. I don't want this empty space out here. All right, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and export it. 
Now it says the export settings of the movie settings are different. Let's see what we got different. Oh, okay, you're right. Let's adjust the export. I didn't notice this was wrong. That's supposed to be 2997, like that. All right, now let's go ahead and export it. There we go. Looks like it's going to take one minute, not very long. Okay, now the movie is exported. We can go look for it. So here's the result. They both look very smooth to me. If you have any questions, leave them under the video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon for more tutorials.